friends, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're gonna do another get ready with me this week. Uh, I'm a little bit tired, so bear with me between like packing and my birthday and wedding dress shopping. It's been really tiring of a week. I haven't really been sleeping a lot because I've just had a lot of extra energy and excitement. Um, I wasn't gonna be talking about wedding dress today, but since I went out yesterday and I actually found my dress, I figured I would talk about it while it is fresh in my mind because I had both a really positive experience and a really negative experience um, at the two different salons that I went to. So I'll talk to you guys about that. I'll give you kind of like some tips along the way of things that I kind of came across as I was going about. And yeah, we'll just talk about the dress that I ended up getting. Uh, I won't include pictures or anything just because I want to keep it uh, somewhat hidden, but I'll describe the dress to you um, in the best way possible. So um, I'm going to be honest. When it came to wedding dress shopping, that was the part that I was... I don't think, I feel like dreading is a really extreme word to use, but I was really like apprehensive about it because I just have had this feeling that wedding dress shopping is going to be a struggle for me. When I closed my eyes, I didn't have a clear picture of a wedding dress that I could picture myself wearing. I didn't have a whole lot of idea. The only thing I was really hell-bent on was that I didn't want strapless. I've never really liked strapless dresses. I personally have never really worn a strapless dress because whenever I've tried them on or whenever I've like considered it, there's always like tugging. And yes, I know with a wedding dress, you have it tailored to you and whatever, but even brides I have seen who have a tailored strapless dress end up either because they are just naturally self-conscious or because the dress actually slips, ends up doing some pulling. So I knew off the bat I would want something unique. What else is new? Um, and I didn't know, I knew that strapless dresses were probably still the most popular style out there, but it's not the only style. So I started doing some research. I have watched like, I went through a phase, I'd say like four years ago, where I was watching a lot of Say Yes to the Dress and I probably was much more well versed in designers um, and some type of styles, but not much out of that. Like I can't tell you a real difference between an A-line and a soft day line and a ball gown. Like, I don't know a lot of those things. So I um, was kind of like putting it off and was like, oh, I'm not really in a hurry. We're not getting married to 2018. And I know that, you know, most of the articles I've read have said that really a year is all you need um, a year out. So I was like, well, I'm still beyond a year. So it, it's not really a rush. And then like one day I was, I like happened to be sitting on the couch and I came across the Yes, the Dress. Haven't watched it probably in like a year and decided to just watch it and that's when I kind of was like okay like I think I think I'm thinking I'm ready to begin the like legit wedding dress process now truthfully I just wanted to go in and say to a consultant like this is what you do all day every day so look at my body I'm pear shaped you guys only ever see like from like the chest up but I am much wider in my hips than I am in my chest and waist and I carry I have done a good job losing weight but I carry still like my heavier weight that I should I'm trying to still lose um in my stomach and in like my thighs which is the classic area that most women carry their unflattering weight so I really just wanted to like tell the consultant like don't make it strapless assess my body and put dresses on me but um, I read a bunch of articles from like people who had gone through the process of like tips and recommendations and I felt like that would be helpful just to read because um, I've never gone wedding dress shopping with someone before. I've had friends get married. I was in my close friend's wedding um, right out of college which she had already picked and like shopped and gotten her wedding dress before I went in to get my maid of honor dress. So I didn't see the process, had really no idea aside from what's on Say Yes to the Dress. So the articles I had read were like, you know, you may not necessarily like cry when you put your this, you know, the dress on. You may not necessarily have that moment that it dawns on you and like the heavens open up that says like this is your dress, um, that it can be overwhelming and that you really should do research, that it's really not helpful to a consultant if you walk in and you just say like, I don't know anything, I don't have anything, I don't have any ideas. So I sat down at Books A Million and I like pulled every bridal catalog off the shelf that they had, there were quite a few, and I just sat down and looked. And there were ones that I took pictures of that I liked. 
and I was initially drawn to lace type dresses because a lot of what I really liked was um, dresses that look strapless but actually have like a mesh like what's on my neck here uh, like a nude mesh but most dresses that were like that had some kind of like lace like decal that would go over it now truthfully I don't like lace I don't like lace I don't like tulle and those are one really common for dresses that have a silhouette like this and two I think tulle is just really popular right now anyways I I don't know if this is true or not but I feel like tulle is a cheap fabric I don't feel like it's super expensive which is why I think it's on a lot of dresses so I was seeing that and I was kind of just like oh no like oh like we'll see so I took pictures of those like ads that I liked for those dresses because I wasn't gonna buy like $60 worth of magazines just to take out a few pictures from that just seemed silly to me so I took pictures and then I sat down and I actually went to those designers websites the top three that I have to say I liked was Maggie Sterilino, Stella York, and Mary's Bridal were the three that I seemed to be like, I looked at their websites and I was like, oh, I like this dress and I like this dress and I like this one. Um, and the common trend I was finding was that I liked dresses that had either some kind of sleeve or some kind of meshing and it either had like a flowy skirt or it had like like some sort of like kind of form fitted but not a lot because I just I'm not somebody who wants to wear Spanx on my wedding I'm not somebody who wants to like have to suction cup all these things to my body to make me like the way I look in a dress I want to like the dress as I am today in this moment um, with nothing else on I didn't even wear a bra when I was <laughs> trying on these dresses and that's kind of like what my attitude was about it so I didn't want anything form-fitted because I feel like I, I don't want my stomach to be a thing I don't want to be self-conscious of that I don't want to be self-conscious at all during my wedding so I printed out these pictures at Staples because I wanted them in color I wrote down the designers I wrote down the style numbers like and I wrote down what I liked about each of the dresses again I was really surprised by my draw to these really like lacy decaled dresses but I was like, you know what, we're just gonna go in, be open-minded, all of that. Um, the other thing I had read, which I really agreed with in, in like some of the articles of brides who had gone shopping was that like, you have to like the dress at every angle and you have to like it, you know, not like, oh, I'll need to lose weight or, oh, I need to make these changes to this dress. And I agree, I, I don't feel like, I, sh I didn't feel like going in, I should have had to find a dress and be like, but I wanna fix this and change this and do that to it, like that wasn't, what I was interested in so that was kind of like my mindset so the two places that I had made bookings for were two boutiques that um, the designers kept coming up on like when I would say like where can I find this designer or where can I find this dress these two places like that was the common thread these two names kept coming up so one of them was Alexandra's in Fall River uh, and this is also a place that I had heard about because one of my coworkers who's getting married next July got her dress there. They have something like over 2,500 dresses. So like I was like, all right, I wanna go there first because I feel like the odds are in my favor that I'll be able to get a dress there. And then I booked another appointment at Angela's Bridal for that same afternoon, which is in um, West Roxbury. So they're much smaller. Um, you know, you drive by it and it doesn't really look like much as a boutique, um, but I at least knew where it was, so I felt good about that. So Ben's mom and my mom carpooled down from Maine and spent the night, Wednesday night. Um, we celebrated my birthday, which was Tuesday on the 25th, and then we got up in the morning and drove to Fall River. It's about an hour away from here, and we weren't sure, like, what we are going to hit for traffic. So we got there, and I'm going to be honest, this appointment was really terrible and it was heart-wrenching like I just felt I felt awful during the appointment um, I'm not gonna say the consultant's name that I have because I don't know she could have been having a bad day um, it, it could have been a number of things but I'm just gonna tell you guys my experience so as I've said I've never been wearing dress shopping I've only seen yes to the dress so I'm going in expecting like a very personable person and someone who like really knows a lot about wedding dresses and makes me feel comfortable and like is willing and open and is going to be helpful and supportive and that's not the experience I got. Um, we were taken about 10 minutes late which was odd because the appointment we had was the first appointment of the day. We were like the only people in the store 
And so I didn't quite understand why we were taken late. And then when we got upstairs, I had called and they had put together like a profile. They had asked my price point, which I'll share with you guys. I know sometimes it's like, you know, taboo to share, but my price point was, was $1,500. That's where I was comfortable. Um, I personally bought my dress. That's something I really wanted. I was adamant that I wanted to be the one to buy my own dress. Um, I just, to me, after doing a lot of the research and seeing what I liked, that was a realistic price. Um, I know I could have gone to David's Bridal theoretically or to like a cheaper place, but I was really hesitant to go to David's Bridal because Ben keeps telling me that David's Bridal is in partnership or some kind of like business relationship with uh, Alfred Angelo who like closed out of nowhere and left so many people without dresses, which I don't even want to, don't want to deal with that. So I wasn't going to go to David's Bridal at all for that reason. So that was my price point and I like showed the consultant the pictures and I was very open with her and I said like listen like this is what I'm like drawn to am I 100% attached to it no do I know what I really want no um, this is just like initially my thinking this is the first place I've ever come to for wedding dress shopping um, and I was showing her the pictures to like give her an idea. And like the first thing she said to me was she was like, you have a lot of Marys and we don't carry that here. And I was like, no, I know. Like I just, but I figured like they didn't have a monopoly on this one style. So I like printed the picture anyways, um, no big deal. And then I went down to go to the bathroom and I came back upstairs while she was pulling dresses and she pulled me aside and she had said to me, she was like, are you sure that you can't go higher on your price point? And I was really put off by that because that amount of money is not, that's not chump change to me. That's a lot of money. And all of the dresses that I had researched, I looked on the websites and no wedding dress website, which is super irritating, would give like an actual price. They all gave price ranges of what I should expect a place to charge, which why, why, why is there a range? Could they just like pick a different number? I don't know, the part just seemed weird to me. And all of the dresses I had showed in those pictures were below my price point of $1,500 according to those ranges. So like when I went in to go wedding dress shopping, I figured like, oh, this will be great. Like I've really picked a good price point like whatever. So for her to say that initially, I was just kind of put off by it. And I said, uh, no, like this is where we're, we're gonna be. So then she started walking me around and it was like pulling dresses out of like, like there were just racks of dresses, like pulling dresses out in these bags. And I really like couldn't really see what the dress was looking like. And she just kept asking like, do you like this one? Do you like this one? And I was just like, I, like, I don't know, maybe like, sure, like I'll try it. I have no idea looking at it in a bag if it's going to be sufficient for me. So we like kept walking around. And then meanwhile, because she like didn't really explain what was going on, I had my mother, Ben's mom and my sister with me. So the three of them were kind of just like traipsing around the store and they weren't just like sitting and waiting. Um, and so like we were definitely not focused when we first started and that also kind of created a little bit of chaos and it wasn't necessarily like they were trying to, to, to tear the appointment or like to make it chaotic. It was just like, I think they didn't really know what was going on and they didn't just want to sit there because they were excited they had excited energy. So like her just like pulling me to the side after going to the bathroom probably wasn't a good call and I should have spoken up, but I just didn't, again, I was also new at this and, and whatever. So then like we went to change and I had called to ask them what to wear for undergarments because I wasn't sure and they basically were like you most people will opt to wear like a strapless bra um, but when you like get your dress if you find your dress you end up just like putting they like sew cups into it so you don't need to wear a bra so my whole thinking was like I only own a dark black <laughs> strapless bra and I'm putting on my dresses like I don't want that to hinder my ability to see the dress and understand the dress so I opted just to not wear a bra at all for, for them. And that didn't, it didn't bother me. She's a professional. Like it's no different than to me, like going to Victoria's Secret and having them size me. Like it didn't bother me. So it just like, I tried like talking to her in between sessions and she just didn't seem to want to talk to me. Like she didn't seem like she liked me, so to speak. And that's been really frustrating for me for most of my wedding experience is that I feel like I've been working with people who frankly don't care, who, don't care about me as a person or don't care that I'm coming in here excited about my wedding and excited about this process and I'm going to be spending what I consider to be a good deal of money and you just treat me like 
eh, I don't really give a shit. Like, I don't really care about you or, you know, if it's not going to be you, it's going to be somebody else. So it doesn't really matter. Like, that's how I felt through the whole process. And it's been really frustrating. And if that is your experience, I'm sorry because it, it doesn't feel great. So I kept, like, I would come, she'd put a dress on me. And I'm kind of a slow processor, I guess, when it comes to fashion. Because she would immediately say to me, like, as she was beating me up, well, what do you think about it? And I was always, like, I didn't have any words. <laughs> um, so, like, I couldn't really tell her what I was thinking and feeling. Um, it was also hard for me because even though um, the designers, aside from Mary's, the two other designers that I liked, they didn't have any of the dresses that I wanted to try on. So that also made it difficult because I had those, I've been looking at those for at this point two weeks. So like those were very much stuck in my brain and everything I was trying on, it just didn't feel anything like that. Um, and I also told her I wasn't a big fan of tool. And she basically would tell me point blank. She was like, well, the dress types that you like are all going to have tool on them. That's just how it works. And I was just like, um, like, okay, like, th like, thanks. Um, and I just, we just tried a lot of dresses on and nothing, I didn't feel great in any of them. Like I didn't put any of them on and really go like, wow, I like this dress or it puts a smile on my face or, or any of that. And like at one point I said to the, I said to her, I was like, if there's anything that you, whether it's like these or different ones that you think I would look good in or that you think I should try, like, let me know. And she was just like, no, I, I can't think of anything. And it was like, uh, okay. Um, and my sister kept pulling dresses for me to try. I probably tried on like 15, 20 dresses at this place. Um, and it just like, none of them were really that great. And I just felt, I just, again, like I felt like the consultant really wasn't helping me or guiding me or doing anything, but literally pulling dresses and putting them on my body. Um, you know, even when I would walk out to stand on the little like pedestal thing, I had to position the dresses and I don't, I don't know the best way to position a dress. Like she would just like stand there or she'd walk off and like come back. Um, and so I just like, I really just felt so discouraged. And I really like, I thought to myself, like, this is it. Like, this is going to be how it goes for wedding dress shopping. And like, maybe I'm that person who's just going to get a dress to get a dress. Or like, maybe I'm going to do this by myself. Like, I really didn't feel good leaving that appointment. And it like, I, I like wanted to cry. Um, and it just like, and that's such a stupid thing to like cry about, but it was really upsetting to me because I just felt like this was how it was going to be at every salon was going to be like this. And it's like, why can't I have like, do I have to go to Kleinfeld and like have that experience? Like that's just, it was just really upsetting on so many rounds. And when we were leaving the appointment, she said to me, um, you know, I feel like I didn't do my job. And, um, but I, but I think that there was something else going on that hindered me. And it was just like, so this is me? Like, this is my fault? Like, I, I don't know. It just was really terrible. And I wouldn't recommend going there if you're in this area. I just, maybe it'd be different if I had a different person. I don't know. But that just wasn't my style. And I was really disheartened afterwards. Um, so then we went to Angela's. And I was just not necessarily in a great headspace. Um, and when we got there... We like walked in and it was like, there was like one other bride there. It was a two o'clock appointment. So it was well after my first one. And a girl's on the phone and she basically was just like, you can start looking at dresses. And like, as soon as I'm done, I'll come over and work with you. So boy, did we get busy, the, the four of us. Um, we probably pulled like 25 dresses. And then she was off the phone and she came over and she introduced herself. Her name was Jenny and she's great. That's why I want to tell you guys about her. Um, and she basically just like asked me about my wedding, when it was, what like kind of vibe I was going for. And I was very upfront with her and I was basically just like, you know what, I'm kind of planning a wedding with no vision, which is not very visionary. I said, so um, my last appointment I did, it really wasn't pleasant. I said, so I'm just trying to have a pleasant experience. And she was just like, right from the get go, I felt like she actually cared. Um, and whether she was faking it or she really did, it doesn't matter to me because she at least gave me that vibe and I felt comfortable around her and I felt like 
she was really knowledgeable of the dresses in there. They didn't have nearly as many as Alexander's, but she seemed to really know them. Um, they had a bunch of new dresses they had just unpacked, so she was like, oh, I'm really excited. Like, can I put this one on you? It's in your price point. You know, I had told her what my price point was, and her statement to me was, oh, that's a great price point. We have so many dresses within that that you could try on. Um, so it was just like night and day different. Um, the other thing was it was a little different at first with there being another bride there because at Angela's they have a bunch of different dressing rooms but when you walk out there is just one section of mirrors so you could be walking out there with two or three or four other brides um, and then like, their entourage is sitting there so when I walked out in my first two dresses the other bride was like finishing up and like they were co giving me comments which it was like no, no 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 like you don't even know me from a hole in the wall which you might think might be helpful for you but it's just extra voices I don't need to be hearing I just want these three people who I have brought to weigh in so they eventually left and like literally we were there probably another two hours and no one else came to the store which is partly why we wanted to go on a weekday because I had a feeling it would be um, much quieter and that was the goal so at that point I like walked out and we kind of came to the conclusion that I really while I liked the idea of doing um, like a flowy or like an a-line dress I really didn't like that because it came down to either being way too poofy which I didn't want my own atmosphere I didn't want to be a like cupcake or look like I like was trying to be Cinderella like that wasn't what I wanted um, and I really also disliked dresses where it would have like a really beautiful ornate detailed top and then the bottom would be nothing like that like you just like we're like oh, I put all the effort into the top and like we're done with that I just didn't like that look I like the idea of like there being a flow of you know if there was gonna be a lot of beading up here that either it like started to lightly fade out into like my bottom area or that it carried all the way through like I wanted something like that I wanted a pretty backing so finally my sister said to me she was like just try a fitted dress she was like just try a fitted dress and see if you like it so they put me in a mermaid with like the corset and whatever and I was like nope I'm not doing that um, then there was the like other type of dress where I don't know if it's just like a fit and flare is what you call it but I tried a fit and flare on and I liked it so I said you know what I actually don't hate this so then she came over and she said like okay well if you didn't hate that like, I've got some ideas of dresses that I think I'd like to try on you so I said okay so she went out and she grabbed some and came back and there was one that she put on me and it had like everything I wanted but just didn't either know how to explain it or just didn't realize it it had um, sleeves on it and it wasn't like a spaghetti strap sleeve or they just like threw it on it was an intentional like designed um, like tank sleeve that fed into a back that had this beautiful like lacing like mesh silhouette on it it had beading on it um, the train of it it just like it's a long train and the designing on it I just I just really love my dress and I I was so like it was so overwhelming coming off of that first appointment and I really liked it and I walked out um, and I could tell that my mom my sister and Ben's mom really liked it and um, I said okay like I think this is this is definitely a contender and she put me in some other dresses and I tried on some sample sale dresses and when I put the other dress back on that's kind of when I knew because I just I I really liked it I liked it even more a second time um, around and it was just I didn't like have that moment but it just felt like this is the dress I'd want to wear like this is it and then they put um, a veil on me to see what that would be like they put a long veil and um, like a shorter veil my sister likes the shorter veil um, my mom likes the longer veil I'm kind of indifferent I don't really have an opinion on that um, I feel like I had exerted all my ability to make opinions um, at that day so there was no more no more in the tank for me to to make opinions for so I was like oh, I'll just decide this later like it's not a big deal um, whatever my mom started sobbing because she was um, 
you know, she just like that, that was my dress in her mind that that was the dress. And she was afraid, I think, to be that emotional when I had first put it on because she didn't want to sway me. She really wanted me to make my own choice. But as soon as I had said like, this is the dress I want, she whoo, instant tears. I was trying not to cry because I knew with all the emotions I was feeling that if I started crying, it would just be terrible. So I like, I got a little teary eyed, but I mostly just like kept it together. And you know, it was this really nice moment. So I ended up taking my measurements and um, ordering the dress. And I know like some people had told me going into it, like, don't feel compelled to get your dress on the front, you know, when you're there, it's, you know, so many emotions and whatever. But like, I found that with wedding stuff, I'm pretty good at like, once I make a decision, it doesn't take me long. Like once I'm in that moment and that headspace where I'm really able to process it, that's it. I've made the decision and then I don't, I don't go back on it. Like there's nothing that we've made a decision about where I've been wishy-washy and after the fact and like, oh, I don't know if we made the right choice. Like, nope, I feel good. And I've kind of just been in the mindset of like, once I make a decision about something and like we sign the contract, do the paperwork, that is it. We are moving on. We're not going back and like humming and hawing over it or like, you know, feeling like we made the wrong decision. Oh, we're committed. And I think that that's been really helpful for me. Yes, I've been getting stressed out. Like, yes, that stuff still happens. But at the end of the day, like, I feel like once I make a decision, I'm good. So in the end, like, I was just really glad that I was able to find my dress and that, you know, it was such a positive experience. And I'm not, I don't question it. Like, I've kept looking at the pictures that, um, you know, we took of me in my dress. And I just, I just really love them. Like, I just genuinely love them. And I love... I love my dress as it is on my body. Like, yes, there are some things where it's not, it was a size, I think it was a size too big. I ended up, they put me in a sample size 14 and they measured me and aside from the bust, I'm actually a wedding dress size 12, which normally I'm a six or an eight in like regular people clothing. The size detail doesn't really matter to me as long as it fits and I don't have to do a ton of altering um, is the goal. So like there was all of that happening and that was my thing, you know, after we had left and um, the first salon, the woman had told me that like, you know, basically the dress I wanted didn't exist and I would need to like custom a dress. And my mom and sister were basically like, yeah, you may have to do that. Like, you know, not every dress will have everything that you want. And I was really adamant that that wasn't a thing. Like, I was like, that's not a norm to have to buy a dress and say like, oh, let me add sleeves to it because it's really supposed to be a sleeveless dress or, oh, I've got this dress with like a long sleeve, but I want a short sleeve. Like that shouldn't be a standard. I'm not allowing that to be a standard. Like, yes, alterations need to happen to make the dress conform to the parts of your body that may not be like the standard but everything else to me in my mind it was like no and that's so pricey you know there was one dress i put on at the first place and my mom was like oh you could just add this like beautiful sleeve set to it and she didn't look at the price when she said that but that that little beautiful sleeve thing she mentioned was 800 dollars, and it was like that is almost as much as the dress i put on my body so no it's not going to be a thing um so I was just really happy that one, I was proven right on that. And that's my biggest advice to you guys is that customizing a dress, I knew from watching Say Yes to the Dress where I have watched girls customize dresses, it gets so expensive, even more so than dresses already are. It gets so expensive. So don't feel the need to like settle in that respect to say like, oh, well, I don't love this part of a dress, but like I'll get it anyways and I'll just make changes to it because you don't really know what that's going to cost. So you're essentially agreeing to some like unknown expense, which if you're cool with that, that's fine. Um, or you may find out that you don't really like it. Like you, that to me means you don't really like the dress and there is a dress out there for every person. Like I, tr I truly believe that. Um, and I was definitely proven. I definitely also think that, you know, my advice would be not to have any um, wrist jewelry on. I like dressed myself and didn't like, I didn't really think about it. Why? I guess why would I have thought about it? But I had my Garmin watch on, which is the teal band watch you guys have seen me wearing lately. And I had a Pandora bracelet on and my mom was petrified because she was like, your Pandora bracelet might catch on one of the dresses. Like you have to take it off. And I was like, I'm not that worried about it. Cause some of these samples are like not in great condition, but fine. Um, and then I also like, I'm not gonna wear a Pandora bracelet. <laughs> like 
on my wedding day. So why was I wearing it? And I'm not gonna wear this like casual Garmin watch. They were like distractive. So I would, I ended up taking them off and just put them in my purse for the day. And the other thing is, um, if you have an idea of what kind of shoes you want to wear, um, like if you plan on wearing a heel, I would bring heels with you. I am not planning on wearing a very tall heel, but putting on those dresses, they're just a standard dress. They're in no way customized to like a short person. I'm only 5'5". Five five. Um, so the dresses were very long on me, and so she ended up just pulling a pair of heels, which they typically would have at a salon, like a bridal salon. So like, not life or death if you don't bring them. But she put me in some, and that really made a difference because I could see a little bit better, like once the dress was tailored, that that's what it would actually look like. I got a better picture of like the floor length where I wasn't carrying like all this dress, you know, on the floor and stuff, which isn't realistic to the day of. So I would just bring that stuff with you. The other thing that I would say is to be open-minded. Hopefully you don't have a consultant who uh, is unwilling to go against like some of the pictures you brought in. Like if you ask them to say like you're an expert in this, could you also like maybe take me out of my comfort zone or what I think I want? Because uh, I, I never thought I would have gotten a, a fit and flare or any kind of really form-fitted dress that was form-fitted beyond like my rib cage area. But that's the dress I ended up buying, and I love it. Like, I genuinely love my dress, um, which is a good thing that I like my dress, but whatever. Um, would be my other advice. And then the other thing I would say is I would really be selective about who you bring with you. I had three people, and the people that I brought with me, I think, were all really... Um, Good in the sense that typically they tell, like, it's been said that if you bring three or more people, it's too many opinions. Now, my people that I brought were very much focused on the fact that they were willing to give their opinion, but they didn't want to sway me. So like I would walk out and I would I would immediately be like, what do you guys think? Like, what do you think of the dress? And everyone, every time would say, well, what do you think? Like, what are your thoughts on the dress? Do you like it? What are some things that you like or dislike about it? No one just like came in and was like, well, I hate this or I don't like this. Like people were, it was really focused on me and no one was really trying to deter me or sway me one way or the other. Like the dress that I ended up buying was a dress that everybody liked, but they all were very quiet when I walked out and they had said like, I think they could tell I liked it, but they didn't want it to sway me. So I would say really bring people who are there for you and people who are going to give their opinion, but also keep in mind that they can be somewhat reserved with it, if, if that makes sense, like having a good balance. Um, my mom was always gonna be there, even if it was just her and I, my mom was number one, and then my sister was number two, and then I was thinking of a third person and immediately Ben's mom came to mind. As I mentioned in my last Get Ready With Me, um, if it were me and I only had sons, I would really, would like my future daughter-in-law to invite me, like to be a part of that because there's no other time I get to be a part of that technically, unless I myself have a daughter. So that's also why I wanted to do it. Um, but in the end, I got my dress, I got my measurements, it was ordered, I had to pay 60%. My dress was like, uh, just barely under my price point which is fine with me because it's everything that I wanted and I'm just like really proud of myself that I was able to buy it that it's like the one thing that I get to say like I treated myself to this and it means a lot to me I don't I, I'm not someone who spends money like that on clothing like I wear really nice clothing but it's always super discounted like or like from Goodwill so it just was a big deal to, and it meant a lot to me to be able to do that. So I'm just really, really happy and I don't even know what designer my dress ended up being from, to be honest with you. I couldn't tell you. It's not on my receipt or anything, but I really look forward to going to the store in four to six months and, and getting it. And I'm just so appreciative to Jenny and Angela's Bridal for giving me the positive experience I wasn't sure I was going to get after my first time around. So um, that is it for me. I would love if you are someone who's gone wedding dress shopping or you like have gotten married, I would love to know about your wedding dress down in the comments below. I think this is really interesting and it can really be personal to whoever, you know, dresses vary so much. So I'd be really curious to hear about it. Um, but that's it for me. I'll talk to you guys in my next video and I hope you're all having a really great day.